The code comp edition for this month that is September is now happening. You have to create an interactive game using JavaScript and React only. In the coming video, I'll, I'll go through how we can create a tic-tac-toe game using React hooks. So that's one way to go. But this competition gives you actual prizes. You can test your skills. Plus, you get to build something which people would like to see and you can put on your resume or the works you have done, so on and so forth. So if you have not started with the code comp submission this month, I would highly recommend you to do so. And let's get into the video. More information on code comp in the description. Hey everyone, welcome back to this video in which I'll be taking up a challenge that is creating the tic-tac-toe, the, ta the classical React game with React hooks. Um, let's see in how many minutes. So let's get into it. So first of all, I'll just start off by getting rid of everything right here. And uh, basically, yeah, everything. So I'm just going to say this is my app function, which just returns me my game right because i don't know i just like to you know put those in different files or something right and what we could do is just create a folder named components and right here i'm gonna push in another component called game oops not k game and index.js right so i'm gonna get react first of all inside this and i'm just thinking um as we speak so let's see what this game should consist of so we know that for a game what we need for tic-tac-toe is we need a board first of all so i'm gonna create uh the game and i'm gonna create the nine check boxes that is the boxes the places where i could put in some work I'm going to say this is a um, box and obviously we know that these boxes are clickable and I want nine of these, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, oops, four, five, six, nope, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? And we could just throw them in a row. So I could just say div class name is row. Right, and once we have that, we could just pretty much throw that like that. And there we are, right? So we have our arrangement now. So what we want is a little bit of CSS so that at least it looks a little bit good. So I'm just going to say import styles or style.css, whatever it is. And for our style.css, let's see what it should look like so first of all let's just fix this that game is not found import game from components game there we go and right here let's see how our display looks right now and let me just pop the dev tools inside the browser there we go all right so we don't need react dev tools for now we can just stick with our default so we have these rows right so first of all what i want to do is i want to give the boxes some sort of width and height so let's say width 200 and height 200 and background is something like this right and maybe like 100 would be fine and border of two pixels solid black right so this is for our box and let me just zoom in here as well so that you guys are able to see and here as well all right so this is our box right and for the row part what we want for the game what we want first of all is this should be flex right and once we do that our row is something like this so we want flex direction to be column right and for our row what we want is this should be flex as well and flex direction row is by default so we are good to go there right so once we have that we are pretty much good for the css part at least for now we can obviously make this a little bit more interesting but anyway we could just give it a width and height 
of 100 100 and we could finally say uh, justify content center and align items align item center which would just you know throw it in the center of the screen right so here we are and actually where we are right there we go right so there's our board and now the next thing we need to do is basically see how we can uh, interact with this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically and actually let me just go ahead and extract this out into a different component right because once we do that it would be easier for us to actually maintain the state for everything so I'm gonna create a new component called box index.js right and this would be import react from from react again right function box which returns us this thing and we are ready to go now what I want to do is instead of this I'll just want to have box with an ID of you know 0 1 2 3 4 whatever it is so we could say 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 7 8 so on and so forth you know just in case we want to maintain some sort of information so for the box part we have something like this and what i want to do is when i click on this box uh toggle text right all right so i'm gonna say text set text is equal to use state and this would be it and this is my text right so i'm gonna say function toggle text is something like if text is equal to blank I want to set text to let's say for example X for now let's just go with that right and hit save and go back and we need to import box from box right once we do that use state is not defined let's just bring use state and once we do that you should be able to see that we have a screen something like this which is fine right so we have all the X's at the moment so what we could do is instead inside the game let's see how we can create a turn so we can say um, for now because I want to just create this game very quickly I'm gonna say go ahead and say function change turn and the uh, const turn set turn is again use state with let's just start with x right uh, let's just bring in use state as well so what we're gonna do is for every box right here we're gonna just pass in this particular state as this and I'm gonna expose the change turn method as well. So I'm gonna say change turn is this change turn, right? So what we want to do is inside change turn, I'm gonna say if turn is equal to, or actually what we could do is just set turn and get the turn. And we could say turn is equal to, you know, X, then I want to set it to O. Otherwise I want to set it to X right simple as that and and actually this should be a ternary operator right so once we do that we're gonna see that we can get rid of this thing and right here we could get rid of actually we need this toggle text method and I'm just gonna simply say prop start um, current state right and this should be what should it be props right and on click I want toggle text but toggle text should also call call in the change state only if um, this is a valid move so I'm gonna say this dot props dot change turn right so we have that now what we have in place is now if I go ahead and click this we can see that we get a turn well you know you could see that it's just switching turns at every 
every dawn, I should say. I don't know, I'm just confused. So anyway, I'm just gonna set some font sizes here. 20 pixel, no, 40 pixel, yep. Font weight bold. Uh, display flex, because why the hell not? And there we go. So we have a nice little box ready with us. So we could just create a style.css here, paste in some box styles, bring in this import style.css and get rid of the box from here. Right, so once we do that, you should be able to see we are still looking fine. Now we need to add the logic to actually detect if we have uh, if a player has one or not right so how do we do that well let's see so a player wins if uh, we have 0 1 2 that is 0 1 2 this is all same or this is all same or the diagonals are all same right so in that case the player wins so for now what i can think of which is a very quick way is instead of maintaining global state or anything like that what we could do is um right here we could send in the props.id which is the id of the box which would eventually help us to create a 2d matrix of basically the um you know board so we'll have a javascript representation of the board as well right so we could have row one two three like that right so i could now i could just go ahead and instead of stuff like this we could just say row is zero and column is zero one two zero one two zero one two right so this should be zero one two as well and zero one two and of course i really believe that better designs do exist but I'm not spending a lot of time so we have stuff like this right so now we have the board and what we could do is now we're gonna get the row and the column on this call so I'm just gonna say that board b o a r d board of row and column is the turn and then I switch the turn right and right here I'm just gonna say props.row and props.call so once we do that what we should have is that I could just say I, I just console log the board every time I make the turn. So now if I go to console and press this, we have um, this as the input because we can see that we have done like uh, the second row and the second element. So once we do that, we have something like this. So I'll write a classic example of how functional components are different from the classes and that is because these components these functional components are actually created again right so this board is initialized again so what we could do is just move the board outside to avoid that i don't want to move the board into state because i don't want a re-render on this but now we're going to see that it kind of works just like just like we expected to right so once we have this so what I want to do is I want to run a test if the elements in the board matches. So, so let's do the row test first. So what I'm going to do is just, you know, check for win. And I'm going to say we have a function check for win. What it does is just runs the, let's say, row test for let i0, i less than board.length, i++. plus plus. I'm going to get the current row as board of i, right? So we have the row. So I'm going to say if row of 0 is equal to row of 1 is equal or and row of 1 is equal to row of 2, right? And basically the row of 0 element exists, that is it's not empty. So what I want is we have a win, right? So I'm just going to return true if we have stuff like that it's okay then we do a column test column column test right similar code i is less than board dot length i plus plus but this time we're gonna do the column so how do we get 
a particular column. So I'm going to say call of one, let's just get the first element, right? And what I'm going to do to get that is I'm going to say board of zero, that is zero row, and ith column, right? Const element two is board of zero row, one row, that is first row, ith column, element three is board second row and ith column. So if element 1 is equal to element 2 and and element 2 is equal to element 3 and element 1 actually exists that it's not empty then also we want to return true right finally i want to run the diagonal diagonal test and how we can run that is basically it's simple um, i'm gonna get d1 as board of 0 0 I'm going to get D2 as board of 1, 1. I'm going to get D3 as board of 2, 2. And once we have the first diagonal with us, I'm going to say basically the same thing. If D1 is equal to D2 and then D2 is equal to D3 and then uh, D1. And actually, we could just have created a function out of this because it's so uh, we are repeating it so many times. Then finally, I'm going to get the second diagonal that is board of uh what should be it? two zero right const p2 is again board of one one and const p3 is actually board of three uh not zero, not really three two this should be zero two not one two zero zero two one one and two zero right and basically the same thing all over again is p2 and then p2 is equal to p3 and then p1 actually exists i'm just going to return true otherwise i'm going to return false right all right so once we have that uh actually instead of returning true what we could do is we could return row of zero here in this case in this case we can return element one which is the correct element which is the correct person who won and here we could return d1 here we can return p1 right and then we could finally return false right so i'm going to get the winner as check for win and i'm going to say if there's no winner well nothing else we have the winner so i'm going to say um let's say i have div id winning text and winning text right and i'm going to initialize this winning text with set winning text and say you state of nothing so now i could just finally go ahead and set the winning text to a uh, winner one right and there we go so now if i go ahead and play it we're gonna see x1 well that's cool let's try it with the diagonal uh okay that works let's try it with o this time so I'm gonna get O to win. Let's see. There we go. Right. So yeah, I mean, it kind of works. So this was a very basic, my very basic attempt to create recreate tic tac toe game in a very minimal way using hooks only and a little bit of logic. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. And if you liked it, don't forget to subscribe. And thank you for watching. I'll see you then in the next one.